Hello and welcome again to Tools in Anesthesia and Critical Care, the online oration for learning through seminars. Today's topic is PFT interpretation for beginners. Myself, Sanish from Sultan Qaboos University Hospital. This lecture is also available in Facebook and YouTube. The main idea of interpreting PFT would be to distinguish between obstructive lung disease and restrictive lung disease. What happens in obstructive lung disease? You know, inspiration is an active process, exhalation is a passive process. When there is bronchospasm or uh, increased resistance in the air airways, there will be reduced expiratory flow rates. Patient will be struggling to exhale whatever he has inhaled. This is similar to a shopping mall parking area where you can drive in easily but when you go out you have to pay parking fee. So there is a little bit of congestion, outflow tract, restriction. So there is an obstructive lung disease or uh, restriction or obstruction to your outflow tract. Coming to the other extreme, restrictive lung disease where the lung parenchyma due to chronic interstitial fibrosis or lung disease refuses to expand the compliance of, of the thoracic compliance is reduced so the volumes and capacities are reduced but think about the airways there is no issue so the flow rates may be normal but the volumes and capacities are reduced think about the car parking space again in shopping mall there is plenty but Think about an office parking space where the parking lots are limited in number. So you can drive in fast, go out fast, but the number of parking lots available is restricted. So this is similar to restrictive lung disease. Now how to interpret our pulmonary function test? Before that, some basics about the lung volumes and capacities. You and me are breathing normally now. That means normal volume of air coming in or going out during normal breath is tidal volume whatever you can take extra to your peak inspiratory capacity will be your inspiratory capacity total volume from your baseline to the maximum inspiration will be inspiratory capacity and think about exhalation from your peak of inspiration you breathe out as hard and as long as you can from this top of inspiration to the maximum exhalation will be the difference will be your force vital capacity designated as FVC. Still there will be some amount of residual volume in your lung making sure that there is no major atelectasis happening. You cannot exhale the residual volume with even with your best of your exhalation effort. That volume is called residual volume. The sum of force vital capacity and the residual volume will be your total lung capacity. Again, come back to your forced exhalation after your peak of inspiration. You know, in the first second, you would have exhaled a major proportion, around 80 to 85 percent of your volume in the first second itself. So, whatever you exhale in the very first second is forced expiratory volume in the first second designated as FEV1. Suppose a patient is having bronchospasm, increased resistance, the traffic congestion like we mentioned in the uh, shopping mall parking lot. The exhalation takes more time. So even the first second it won't be a sharp exhalation, it will take more time. So first second whatever is exhaled will be less. So the proportion of FEV1 against FVC will be less. So when the ratio of FEV1 by FVC is less, that indicates there is an issue of airway resistance, you are most probably dealing with an obstructive lung disease. If your total lung capacity is restricted due to chronic fibrosis, restrictive lung disease is the diagnosis. But there are some scenarios where you get mixture of uh, these values, that's when we get to interpret the pulmonary function test. This is the classical algorithm given in the textbooks how to interpret pulmonary function test. But a word of caution I would like to give is that clinical history is very important before 
getting yourself indulged in the numbers given by the pulmonary function test so clinical history will give you some clues then you go to the numbers we'll be mainly dealing with four indices for beginners level first will be FEV1 by FEC if it is less than lower limit of normal LLN is lower limit of normal as given in the PFT readings if it is less that means there is an issue of airway resistance problem bronchospasm then you check the force vital capacity if it is normal then you say it is an obstructive lung disease if force vital capacity is reduced total lung capacity is accepted again you will be zeroing down to obstructive lung disease and if total lung capacity is restricted you can say already because of the ratio is less there is an obstructive element TLC is less that means there is a restrictive element as well so it's a mixed defect coming to the left side sometimes you get the ratio as acceptable or normal either you are dealing with a normal PFT or you are deceived by a proportionate reduction in the FEV1 and FEC so you check the FEC if it is normal you are confidently saying that the PFT is normal but if the force vital capacity is reduced then you have to look at the third number total lung capacity total lung capacity reduced clearly says there is restriction if there is no restriction you have to blame it on obstructive lung disease a different way of approaching PFTs will be to see where all your values are lying in a PFT reading first value you look at is FEV1 by FEC it can either be less than lower limit of normal as I indicated with the white uh, airways indicating there is uh, bronchospasm and the left side FEV1 by FEC is normal which says there is no airway resistance issue next value we look at is force vital capacity whether patient is able to blow out nicely if can be normal as you can inflate the pink balloon or if it is restricted FEV1 is less then balloon cannot be inflated next value we look at is total lung capacity either it will be normal or reduction in total lung capacity chained lung indicating restrictive lung disease classically one more index we will be discussing will be the diffusion capacity either the diffusion across the membrane is normal or diffusion is not happening or it's limited or less once you plot these values you can say that left side ones are normal and uh, these three values are uh, coming inside the obstructive lung disease with a characteristic one FEV1 by FVC is reduced that is characteristically indicating an obstructive pathology right then other three values reduced total lung capacity is classical of uh, or diagnostic of restrictive pathology though reduction in FVC and uh, reduced uh, diffusion capacity can be common in obstructive or restrictive lung disease right so you see the values and w see where you can locate your values on a particular PFT reading next responsibility if the obstruction to airflow is present that indicated by FEV1 by FEC ratio some uh, spirometric reading a uh, PFT readings will give lower limit of normal some will give predicted value so predicted minus 8 percent is lower limit of normal for the males predicted minus 9 for females once you diagnose airway obstruction your next step will be to grade it severity and then reversibility whether it's responding to uh, bronchodilators or is it consistent with an emphysematous change reversibility is indicated by an increase or improvement by 12 percent or 200 ml in FEV1 or 15 percent improvement in FVC or 200 ml improvement in FVC after bronchodilator a positive bronchodilator response strongly confirms the diagnosis of bronchial asthma but a lack of responsiveness in the lab does not preclude success in a clinical trial of bronchodilator therapy always give the benefit of doubt to the patient coming to restrictive process the severity is graded by either total lung capacity or force vital capacity suppose you get a normal PFT values and uh, only diffusion capacity is reduced you have to blame it to extra parenchymal issues like pulmonary embolism pulmonary artery hypertension or it can also happen in the early phases of interstitial lung disease 
PFT spirometry, we can all also distinguish between upper airway obstruction, variable or fixed or in intra or extra thoracic obstruction leading to the symptoms. Let us try to interpret with this technique some of the PFTs. Case number one, a 51 year old woman with shortness of breath, coughing and wheezing. Wheezing is an obstruction, right? Look at FEV1 by FVC, it is 58.2, lower limit of normal was 73.4. That means definitely there is an element of bronchospasm or obstructive lung disease, right? You go ahead, check the force vital capacity. It is 2.42 as against the lowest expected was uh, 2.24. So force vital capacity is accepted. Suppose you get a value like total lung capacity, normal or increased. Now we have three diagnostic points out of which one is characteristically indicating an obstructive pathology. So your next responsibility would be to check the reversibility. So they have done the post bronchodilator values again. You can see the FVC and FEV1 are uh, increasing significantly with the bronchodilator therapy again reinforcing our diagnosis of obstructive lung disease. Case number two, 68 year old woman with shortness of breath but no cough or wheezing. Look at the FEV1 by FVC ratio 88.6, 67.3 is the lower limit of normal so one ratio is normal. Either you are dealing with a normal patient or you have been deceived by a proportionate reduction in FEV1 and FVC. So next step, you check the force vital capacity. It is 1.85, which is only 60% predicted. So you, now you know you have been cheated with a normal value of FEV1 by FVC. There is a pathology. Look at the total lung capacity. It's 2.74, which is again only 53% of the predicted. Now we have a characteristic diagnostic feature suggestive of restrictive lung disease, right? You got a normal value of FEV1 by FVC. You shouldn't get deceived. Check the force vital capacity, total lung capacity. All are indicating now a restrictive lung disease. Check the diffusion capacity, DLCO value also. 9.05 as against the lower limit of normal, 14.7. It's only 46% of expected. So we, ha we can make a clear cut diagnosis of restrictive lung disease. Case number three, a 60 year old man presents to his primary care provider with complaints of increasing dyspnea on exertion. He has 40 pack year history of smoking and is retired following a career as building contractor. History says he has risk factors of obstructive lung disease, smoking, career as building contractor, exposure to dust, environmental pollutants, cement and other chemicals. Now we can look at the PFT values. Look at the FEV1 by FVC ratio. The actual value is 47 only where the predicted was 79. So there is a clear indication of airway resistance or bronchospasm. Look at the FVC. Actual was 1.89. Uh, predicted was 4.58. So it's drastically reduced. Its force vital capacity is significantly reduced. Look at the total lung capacity. Actual value is 7.51 as again 6.41 that is 117 percent of the predicted looks like an emphysematous chest. Diffusion capacity 20 as against 33.43 which is only 62 percent of the predicted. So now we have four diagnostic points out of which three are falling within the obstructive lung disease zone. We have the characteristic one. Uh, ratio FEV1 by FEC is significantly reduced so we make a diagnosis of, of obstructive lung disease. Our next responsibility check with after bronchodilator we can see a significant change in FVC and FEV1 that means there is a significantly bronchodilator responsive obstructive lung disease. One more example, 68 year old woman presents with a progressive shortness of breath. Our first point will be FEV1 by FVC ratio. Patient's value was 81.7 which is very much accepted. So either we are dealing with a normal PFT 
or we are deceived by a proportionate reduction in FEV1 by FVC. Look at the FVC. Patient's value is 2.63, which is very much accepted. So it looks like we are dealing with a normal PFT, right? Check the total lung capacity. 4.01 as against 3.77, which is again accepted. Looks to be in the normal zone, right? All the first three indices discussed are in the normal zone. Check the diffusion capacity, which is only 9.29 as against the expected 16.4. There is a significant reduction in the diffusion capacity. So the initial PFT indices were normal. Still, there is a significant problem with the diffusion across the membrane. That means we are either dealing with an extra parenchymal issue like pulmonary artery hypertension, pulmonary embolism, or it may be an early phase of interstitial lung disease as well. So this is the way to go about interpreting PFT. I think you can try this method with uh, more and more uh, PFT examples. I hope you enjoyed this edition of uh, PFT interpretation for uh, beginners. Looking forward to meet you with another interesting topic very soon as part of tools in anesthesia and critical care. Thank you. Thank you very much.